I made soup. It's just a broth, but it's broth taking. Soup scribe. If you want to make your soup golden, just add 24 carrots. I'll show myself out now. Do you know what this is? It's not an unripe tomato, it's a persimmon. And I'm excited because it's November, so it's persimmon season and it's my favorite fruit ever. It's hard to say, so persimmon, persimmons, So the easiest way to remember how to say it is to picture Richard Simmons purring like a cat. Per Simmons. I'll cut it open so you can see it. Can you see it? How about now? So you just keep slicing it like that and it makes it look like a pretty star. So the homework from this vlog is for you to try a persimmon if you haven't tried it yet. So this one's a vanilla persimmon. There's a lot of different kinds of persimmons. Um, like fu yu, fu, fu chia. It depends what your grocery store has available. Just make sure it's ripe when you eat it, otherwise it can taste astringent. Although I have no idea what something astringent tastes like and I kind of don't want to find out. Now all I can think about is Richard Simmons purring. <gasps> Wait a minute. It might not be a pumpkin. It might be a persimmon bed. Can you see my leggings? They're by my sponsor, Till You Collapse. You can see um, Wolverine took his claws and slashed them, and then a seamstress put mesh on them everywhere. Excuse me. Actually, the leggings are vintage. They're from last year. La oh, I'm so last season. Look at me, I'm wearing like a Better Bodies hoodie, and I don't even think Better Bodies is in style anymore. Anywho, Tell You Claps has been launching some really cute new items, so I'll show you some pictures of the new stuff. And they gave me a coupon code for you guys. It's code Sarah, and you get 10% off of everything on the Tell You Collapse website. And also, can somebody let me know in the comments below if Better Bodies is no longer hip and trendy? I don't give a shit. It's a persimmon intermission. You're like, ooh, what's that? Is that a drill for the tooth? This company reached out to me to do a review of their massage gun, and I've always wanted one, and I'm dying to do the review. And I'll do it in a separate YouTube video. But, can, can, can you see? That's that's not gonna work in Canada. And I reached out to the company to let them know, so they have already mailed out the correct plug. The good news is that it's already come charged, so I can at least play around with it for four hours. One of my friends asked me if I would do a video demonstration on what to do when you put your neck out. I hate it when that happens. You know, sometimes you sleep funny or sometimes you just lose engagement of the correct muscles and you jack up your whole upper traps, levator scap. Hurts like a bitch for a few days. So let me show you what I do when that happens. Can you see me? So why does this even happen? Well, sometimes when we're doing things, you know, hanging from bars, doing gymnastics, doing pole fitness, handstand stuff, you know, monkey stuff. Um, what happens is we, we aren't stabilizing properly with the shoulder blade. And so this instability makes our compensating muscles freak out and try and help out being the levator scap, the upper traps, and it can put them into spasm and it, you know, hurts like a bitch. So one thing I like to do right away is just really fire up the lat and the teres major. So the teres major is the upper lat. So I just start by doing some rows and I hold it and I even use my other hand to help me really dig in and find engagement in the Terry's major. Then I can do some reps. Just make sure I'm properly firing that muscle. And then I wanna also target the lat. So that means I need to extend at the T-spine. Oh, really dig into it. I can use my other hand to auto assist really feel it firing. Hold it. Oh, nice. And so that's just a really cool way to remind our bodies what muscles we're supposed to be using. So that way we can let these guys chill out. Then I sit down in a chair and I put my hand under the chair and I pull up on it to really engage the lat. And then I stretch the neck. Take my hand and I gently 
bring my ear to my shoulder on the opposite side. And I hold this, really concentrating on engaging the lag. Then I sniff my armpit. Ooh, nice stretch. Try it with me. So you can see I have a nice collection of massage balls from Rumble Roller. They've generously sponsored me with these. I can put the link below if you're interested. I really like this apparatus for when I put my neck out. I start right at the base of the skull and I apply pressure right at the base of the skull and I hold it there. You can see I have my neck on stretch. Oh, and there's a vomit spot. I call them vomit spots. And I breathe through my nose. And I start to feel it release. Then I move it down a little bit and repeat and move it down. Oh, oh, <laughs> good times. You'll know when you feel a vomit spot. Just breathe through it and apply pressure and you'll start to feel it release and work all the way down. And then also do it more towards the back, right at the base of the skull, and repeat it down here as well. I also like to use my hands to massage the upper trap. I can actually pinch it between my thumb and fingers and hold it, breathe through my nose, and feel it release. And I can actually feel a trigger point. It actually kind of gives a headache feeling. And then just kind of work my way with my fingers all the way down. So getting into the upper trap area here can be more challenging to do with the massage ball. So I'll set up my barbell and I can apply pressure this way. So I'm pulling the barbell down and I'm pushing my body up into it like I would have done with the massage ball in different angles. Kind of get more, ooh, right there, get right into it. The key is to just kind of move it around until you find your vomit spot and then hold it and breathe in and out through your nose. And then of course, using the rumble roller, I like it because it has the teeth and it can dig into the knots that are in your upper back musculature. And of course, a lacrosse ball works great. Oh, ooh. Oh, I found one in my QL. Good times, people. Please be, oh, it's, it's working. It's working. Okay, okay. Oh, look at that, look, look at that. Can you see that, can you see that? Oh, oh. Oh, that's nice for releasing the pec minor. Oh, there's a spot right in my glute. Oh, right in that QL. Oh, mid-back erector, you jerk. Oh, that's nice, that's nice. Oh, that's painful. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So much yes. Oh, right, oh, Jiminy Cricket, that's, that's that. And there's a spot right in my groin. Yeah, right there. Yes. Wow, I really regret being cheap all these years. This is, I wish I had this years ago. This is, this is good shit. I would give it perfect 100 bonus score. I will do a formal review of this item in another video. I need to spend a little bit more time playing with it first, so stay tuned. In the meantime, they did give me a coupon code for it. Uh, for, I think it's for 25, is it $25 off or 25% off? I don't remember, I will post it here and I'll post my link as well if you're interested in, just get one, like, wow. Next, I want to answer a very common question I get asked, but first I need to move the trash there because, we well, see, I have to put that there because my cats can open the trash cupboard and then they get into it and they eat stuff and then they barf everywhere, so they can't, never mind. I'll just change location. Oh, this is crooked. Stupid tripod, it's about as useful as a wire mesh canoe. I know other vloggers use fancy lighting to make their faces look really pretty. Um, I don't have fancy lighting, so this is my face. I can't believe it's already the middle of November, so I'm just trying to get organized for the new year, make sure everything's ready to go for you guys. I just did a photo shoot so that I can update my website in the new year, and I am gonna bring back the 30-day igniter in January. 
it will run for the whole month of January and I'll be very much involved in the group. So you can mark that on your calendar now if you're interested in doing home workouts in January to kick off the new year. These are 10 minute home workouts and you just play the video and you do the workout with me. It was such a success last January so I'm bringing it back. If you did the igniter last year, you can do the January challenge again with me this year. And if you don't have the igniter, you can buy the igniter. It's very affordable. And you can do the challenge with all the cool kids in January. And I'll be there. Kayla is my photographer today. Hello. She's back for another vlog. I'm back. <laughs> and here we have Kayla. This is the coolest place. Here I am, hello, can you see me? What are you guys looking at? You, cause you're awesome. <laughs> Handstand tuck. So the most common question I'm asked is, how long does it take to fix muscle imbalances? How long does it take to learn the splits, pull-ups, handstands, a ring muscle up, for instance. You know, four years ago, I was asking myself these exact same questions. So here's my two cents on this. Okay, so back in 2016, I thought I could fix my muscle imbalances in a few weeks and that I would be able to learn my ring muscle up in less than a year. I'm, I'm not kidding. It's kind of funny that I thought that. Hold on, Coco's yelling. Let me check on her. I'm back and Coco's okay and also I was hungry so I got the peanut butter BSM protein crisp bar. Mmm. -hmm. It's not too sweet. It reminds me, you know Reese's Pieces? That's what it tastes like. Mm hmm Where was I? Oh yeah, so now that I've spent the past four years studying muscle imbalances and trying to fix myself, I know the truth. And as my mentor Julian Pino says, how long does it take to fix muscle imbalances? as long as it takes. Four years later, I can almost do a ring muscle up. And it took me four years to get that far. And many people would criticize me saying it shouldn't have taken you that long to get that far. But in my case, it did take that long because of my baseline. So how long does it take? Well, that depends on your baseline. Let me elaborate. So I keep seeing programs like this advertised on the internet. 30 days to a backflip, 30 days to a handstand, 12 weeks to a press handstand, four weeks to the splits, eight weeks to a ring muscle up. To which I say, perhaps. You see, all of these skills have something in common. They're specialty skills, which means they're hella hard to learn and execute. Now, if you recall, I am a strong fit certified coach, which means my philosophy revolves around doo -doo 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 -doo, the S pyramid. S, S, S. S for structure, S for stabilization, S for specialization, and S for Sarah. And so that means things like press handstands, handstands, splits, um, ring muscle ups, they all belong at the top of the pyramid in the specialization section, which means in order to execute the skills here, you first need to have developed what's underneath the structure and the stabilization. So the name of the game is to build a really wide pyramid and a really tall pyramid. Basically, the person with the widest and tallest pyramid wins. So on that note, yes, it is possible to learn these skills in like 12 weeks if you have already developed impeccable structure and stabilization and you've already started to work on your mobility, which is a specialization. But who actually enters into these programs already possessing a big ass S pyramid? Not a whole hell of a lot of people, which is why most people don't actually end up being able to do a press handstand after 12 weeks or the splits after four weeks. I mean, you can always force yourself to do something, but if you're not doing it with the correct muscles 
engaged, then you're going to break. So in other words, if you are rich froning, then you will learn the specialty skills in the prescribed time. Now there's nothing wrong with the programming that's being offered in the specialty programs. You just have to bear in mind that the assumption is that you have no structural deficiencies that you can stabilize, meaning you have no imbalances between the right and left side, or at least they're negligible, and you already have pretty decent mobility. So if you have a really tiny S pyramid, like I had four years ago, what does this mean? It means you're in the same situation that I was four years ago, which is why I couldn't learn a strict ring muscle up in eight weeks or even in a year. That's why it's taken me four years, because I first had to build a big ass S pyramid. And it took me four years because I was starting from zero. Actually, I was starting from less than zero, more like minus 10, because I had a lot of problems. So here's everything that was wrong with me. Let's go in order from head to toe. In fact, I had to make a list because there were so many things and I don't wanna forget anything. Left upper trap dominance, left scapular instability, decreased left shoulder active range of motion. So I literally could only lift the left shoulder this high. I couldn't bring it all the way overhead like I could with the right one. And if I tried to bring it overhead, I would compensate by shrugging at the shoulder and using the upper trap, upper trap dominance. And I also couldn't lock out the elbow overhead. It would just buckle. I had very poor thoracic spine mobility. It was very difficult for me to extend the T-spine and to rotate, which is why it always hurt my neck trying to change lanes when I was driving. I had absolutely no TVA strength, TVA, transverse abs. It's your body's primary stabilizer. It stabilizes your low back, your lumbar spine. And this caused a lot of problems for me upstream and downstream. So I ended up having left low back pain, my left QL, just constantly in spasm and pissed off. And it made me miserable for a lot of years. I had a massive anterior pelvic tilt. It was causing this massive hyperlordosis, like a really arched low back appearance. So basically I had both upper and lower cross syndrome. These are just fancy words I'm using because I don't know if you know, I have a Bachelor of Science in Physiotherapy and I'm also a dentist and I have to say that dentists, doctors, physios, we are the worst at actually assessing ourselves. Oh, this was really unpleasant for me. I had bilateral proximal hamstring tendinopathy. So right where the hamstring inserts right into the sits bone, right at the butt, Oh my gosh, it was so painful. And that's very common in people with an anterior pelvic tilt because if you try to um, open up your hamstrings with an anterior pelvic tilt, ooh, that's gonna tear it right at the attachment point. I was also using my glutes out of context because I had no TVA, so I also had a lot of butt pain. <laughs> I had poor hip mobility. I had really severe right knee pain. In fact, that was probably the most excruciating pain I had in my entire body in 2016. Both knees hurt me, but the right one was the worst. Pronated feet, and of course, I was given orthotics as a Band-Aid solution, whereas the solution was actually to strengthen my TVA and then improve the mobility in my inner hamstrings, and then poof, that solves the foot pronation issues. It solves ankle mobility issues as well. And I had jumping incontinence, so whenever I did double unders with the jump rope, I would pee my pants a little bit, and I also had a numb vagina. I was just not connected to my own body or my sexual life force at all. And that's actually something I spend a lot of time with in the first few weeks of my Strength Academy with the women who join my program, because a lot of us have very weak pelvic floors. So we spend a lot of time doing pelvic floor strengthening exercises, vaginal weight lifting exercises, and that helps us learn how to engage the TVA by engaging the pelvic floor. Basically everything that could be wrong with me was wrong with me, and it ended up being a blessing in disguise. Do you have any idea how much I have learned about deleterious movement patterns, how to identify them, and how to fix them just by trying to fix myself. You know, it's true that expression, transform people, can transform people. So four years later, I have developed my own system for helping people build a big ass S pyramid.
and that's what my Strength Academy is all about. It's literally for people who need to start from zero or less than zero, like me in my case. And we focus on building the structure and the stability. And then once that's developed, then we can start to learn really cool specialty skills. And there is an order of operations. And I had to learn that the hard way by experimenting and making mistakes and injuring myself. So you can learn a lot from all the mistakes I made along the way. Basically, the best way to learn is through self-experimentation and by forcing yourself to move outside of your movement comfort zone. That's why I do pole fitness. It's why I try advanced gymnastic skills because that's how I learn about movement and it's how I identify my weaknesses and it's how I figure out how to improve. The key to learning is being open to learning, being open to getting stronger. So in a nutshell, my Strength Academy teaches structure and stabilization so that then I can teach you how to specialize. So that's why now the girls who've been in my program for 24 weeks already are starting to do some pretty cool things like headstands, crows, pull-ups, you know, stuff like that. And that's why my Strength Academy is not a 12-week program or a 30-day program. It's a program that just keeps going and going because you have to keep going and going if you want to improve. The learning never stops. Once I stopped putting a timeline on everything I was doing, I started to really enjoy my training practice. The focus of my intent became making small 1% daily improvements. And these little improvements, 1% at a time, have quite a cumulative effect when you add them up after half a year or a year or four years later. And that's what happened to me four years later. And that's why I was able to stay in the game because I focused on the small daily wins, those small 1% improvements. You know, as my mom likes to say, Sarah, are you in a rush to die? She's like, stop it. You're taking all the fun out of what you're doing. You can't rush an outcome. If you do rush your outcome, it's not going to be a stable result and you're probably going to break. You're going to probably end up quitting. So to answer the question, how long does it take to overcome muscle imbalances and how long does it take to learn cool athletic skills? The answer is, it depends. It depends on your current baseline situation. It depends on how consistent you are with the corrective exercises. It depends how badly you want to fix yourself. It depends how badly you want to learn the athletic skills that you dream of being able to execute. Your ability to stay the course is going to depend on your mindset. If you have a disempowering mindset when you are training, you're going to end up quitting. So instead of spending your time taking productive action to make small 1% daily improvements, you'll waste your time gathering evidence for all the reasons why you cannot prevail, why you can't overcome, and why you should quit. I hope that my four-year transformation inspires you to stay the course. And I'm not done yet. I'm still transforming. I'm just getting this party started. You know, as long as I am alive, I will be working on finding my weakest links and improving them. Ooh, so true story. So I did join a 12-week specialty program to learn a specialty skill. And I did not learn it in the 12 weeks. I have not learned it in 24 weeks either. I have not learned it in 36 weeks. I'm still working on it. I went into this program already having built a pretty decent S pyramid. I mean, think about how many sandbag carries I've done in the past four years, how many times I've pumped my lats in the past four years. I mean, I can lug a 100 pound sandbag for 400 meters. I can do pull-ups with 35 pounds strapped to my 132 pound body. So how can you compare my entry level S pyramid to somebody who hasn't done these things in the past four years? So this right here is the difference between making progress without breaking when trying to specialize versus making progress when trying to specialize at the expense of breaking. You can't rush an outcome. You can't build a faux S pyramid in 12 weeks 
it took me four years and I'm still building it. It still has cracks in the foundation. I know the truth of what it takes to learn how to move better. And I'm really proud of all the really cool things that I've learned how to do with my body in the past four years. And it feels nice to be able to move without being in horrible pain or to have these horrible mobility restrictions. I mean, it's such a buzzkill. It really is. So I'm really proud of myself for just improving my quality of life in general. Learning the specialty skills was literally icing on the cake. It's the cherry on top. But you know what the best part of my transformation is? I'm a totally different person. I've become a very confident woman because along the way I realized that I have what it takes to overcome my self-imposed limitations, whether they're mental or physical. We all have that ability, as long as you're willing to have an empowering practice and stay the course. So if you are on the same page as me, and you are genuinely interested in learning how to move better and how to improve your mindset so that you can have an empowering training practice, I would love to help you. You don't have to be advanced to join, and you start at week one. It's sequential. It goes in, I told you, order of operations is my approach. So I love working with beginners because I know what it's like to be a beginner. In fact, I know what it's like to be minus 10, not just starting from zero. So I really do look after my beginners. So I made it very affordable and it's it's a monthly program and you basically get ongoing mentorship from me so you can learn how to build this and then learn all the cool skills in the timeline that's correct for you. Okay, thank you so much for joining me here today. I really appreciate your time and attention. Thank you so much for subscribing. And if you do have questions, you can drop them in the comments below.